So yet another marvellous prospect for Premier Division match as Rangers kick off in front of a capacity crowd here at Petodre. Mark Walters getting his first touch and getting some treatment from the Aberdeen fans. But the immense importance of the match reflected by the careful thought which has gone into the team selections. And Aberdeen have brought Brian Irvin into the side wearing number three with Willie Faulkner pushing into the attack beside Charlie Nicholas. The first free kick of the match is awarded inside the box against Ian Durant. There's Brian Irvin who's playing in a midfield role in the early stages of the match. So Leighton with the short free kick. And Rangers are reorganised somewhat. They've put Richard Goff into the right-back position, which they always wanted to use him for, with John Brown joining Graham Roberts in central defence and some steel in midfield provided by John McGregor. There's Charlie Nicholas for the first time involved in the match. Here's McKimmy. Bet making the run. The Rangers played, of course. Challenged by Bartram. There's McKimmy. And Rangers have the throw. Rangers playing against a stiff breeze. At the moment it's dry overhead, but the pitch is very soft indeed and will undoubtedly cut up as the match goes on. Nicholas in the middle with Brian Irvin supporting. There he is. And a push this time by Charlie Nicholas on Brown. And I don't think Nicholas is indicating any agreement with the referee. Wilkins under pressure from Peter Nicholas. The layoff from Walters. Determined play by Irvin, but he's been penalised. It's already established that it's going to be very tough indeed in the middle of the field. There's Wilkins. McGregor beaten to the ball by McKimmy. McGregor and McKimmy collided. And McGregor is on the ground. He appears to be in a lot of pain. The game still continuing with Woods in possession. But referee McCluskey is casting an eye towards the Rangers. Number eight, there he is. I'm sure there will be a hold-up as soon as the ball is out of play. Peter Nicholas laying it back to Connor. McGregor is still in trouble on the ground as Brown's at full stretch. Bartram touches it back. Brown gives it away though to Peter Nicholas. It's a good burst this from Aberdeen. Here's Bet taking on Bartram for pace, but that's not an easy task. Brown and the clearance gives the opportunity to let John McGregor have some treatment. And this does look ominous for McGregor. He's already had severe setbacks through injury in his career. And it came about as the ball was swung over to the left for McGregor to chase. McKimmy came sprinting in, got to the ball first. McGregor coming through, collided with McKimmy. No intent, of course, on the part of the Aberdeen fullback. An accidental collision, and McGregor is clearly in a lot of trouble. Bill Borsma, the Rangers physio, getting McGregor back in his feet, but he had desperate trouble with a knee injury earlier in his career, sustained initially when he was on loan to St. Mern from Liverpool. But John McGregor goes off with that injury to his right knee, and the replacement is the Rangers player manager, Graham Surris. Bolton did well. So did Goff for Rangers with the clearance. That appeared to be a push by Walters, but the referee saw nothing amiss. It's Durant now releasing McCoy to the middle. Durant calls for the ball back, running at the Aberdeen defence. This is when he's at his most dangerous. Back it goes to Walters, and that's well taken by Leighton. Good goalkeeping and a fine effort by Mark Walters. But it was the commitment of Ian Durant running at the Aberdeen defence, going into the box, battling half a possession, easing it out to Walters, and that driven ball could so easily have rebounded from a lesser goalkeeper. So Graham Roberts is penalised, and Aberdeen have the free kick. Referee Jim McCluskey from Stewarton. 
charge of the match because George coming from Kaluk, who was scheduled to handle the match, has been promoted to his full-time post with the SFA in charge of all matters refereeing. Connor's free kick. A miscue by Woods. Here's Jim Bett. Closed down instantly by Sinus. Fleish helps it on. There's Brown. A good effort from Hackett. Well, it all started with a bad punch out from Chris Woods. Bad playing it in. McLeish with a back heel across the face of the goal. Found its way to Hackett, and that shot dipping just over the crossbar. There's Bartram. Run by McCoy. McLeish is with him. Can McCoy make something of this? Yes! It's a magnificent goal from Ali McCoy. Opportunism at its highest class. The 21st minute of the first half. The Rangers fans go crazy. And it's little wonder. This was superb striking. The long ball forward from Bartram. McCoy is closely marked by the Scotland centre half by McLeish. Turned him brilliantly, made a little space for the shot and drilled it past Leighton. So McCoy with his 27th Premier Division goal of the season, his 36th goal in all club competitions. A quite remarkable record. And it really is the first clear chance Rangers have had in the match so far. And taken brilliantly by McCoy. So an offside flag is up, the Hawk fully fault down. So free kick to Rangers. And the beach end now celebrating in style. With all the Rangers fans grouped behind Chris Woods. And so far a joyful occasion here at Petodre. Sinners for the header. It's helped on by McCoist. So all the noise now coming from the Rangers fans. Aberdeen supporters somewhat stunned. And it's the first booking of the match and it's for Richard Goff of Rangers. Referee Jim McCluskey booking Goff, he's very upset as you can see and really I fear that Goff to some extent is a victim of the recent hectic exchanges referee McCluskey perhaps taking the view he had to take a firm line with the next offender and Goff was the unlucky player and the yellow card for Richard Goff so there's Robert Connors Free kick. Breaks down towards Nicholas to Charlie Nicholas and it's Peter Nicholas with the snapshot. High over the bar. I've been depending a great deal on Peter Nicholas to shore up the middle of the field. Brown to Ferguson. Now Durant. It's Ferguson again. towards McCoist wide now to Goff Walters on the right a good build up from Rangers here's Walters well tackled by Connor and Miller but it's McCoist who picks up the loose ball here's Walters well that made a very accurate glancing header and Mark Walters who wasn't able to deliver the swipe picking up good position McCoy's doing well going wide to pick up the loose ball, looking for Walters at the near post area, and the header goes wide. Bet looking for Charlie Nicholas, finding only the head of Ray Wilkins. Here's McCoy. Played away by Connor. This is Bartram. And now Ferguson. Inside is Durant. That's towards McCoy. Connor's the covering player. And a fine tackle by Robert Connor. Excellent play by Connor. That ball slanted through into the path of Ali McCoy's. Connor giving good cover to the central defence. The sliding tackle to get the ball back to Leighton. 
Richard Goss header. Kimi returns it straight to Wilkins. Playing with lots of polish in midfield for Rangers. Wilkins, this is Bartram. Well, just look how quick he is because McKimmy's a very quick defender indeed. Bartram's cross, there's Walters off the knee of McCoist. And what a chance that was for Rangers. The danger not yet over for Aberdeen. It's headed away now by Irvin. Here's Bartram. Now Goff. Wilkins plays it wide. Rangers enjoying a great spell of ascendancy now as the ball is played in by Roberts. There's Goff! The second for Rangers. Richard Goff's third for Rangers and... 44 minutes on the clock. A burst of attacking play from Rangers. It could so easily be a goal earlier when Bartram tore apart the Aberdeen defence on the right. But in the end, it was Graham Roberts who sent over a high looping cross. There was Richard Goff doing one of the things he didn't want for. The glancing downward header, bouncing away from Leighton into the corner. Joyce layoff finds Durant. Still in Durant. Tackled on the back by Irvin. The referee saw nothing wrong. Still Irvin. That's a good play for the big defender. Bass cut up by Sunis initially. Faulkner and Roberts in a tough tackle on the halfway line. The throw goes Rangers' way. That's Goff. That's cut off by Willie Miller. Faulkner's layoff goes beyond Hackett. Goff coming in strongly. There's Irvin. Now Hackett has it from Faulkner. The question of Aberdeen lying down to this two-goal deficit. Here's Hackett. Well taken by Woods, that's superb goalkeeping and that will be the necessary boost to the Woods' confidence after injury and after a shaky start. Hackett doing well, breaking on the left, showing a lot of pace, a good left foot cross, Faulkner closing in and it's brilliantly held by Woods. Here's Durant now in space. Ferguson inside, the ball just out of reach. It breaks off Connor to the far side, Peter Nicholas will tidy up. And the goal kick is given. And Jim Layton with the goal kick. With injury time now going on at Pitodri. And there goes the half-time whistle. An outstanding first-half performance from Rangers. The opening exchanges were fairly even, but the Rangers spirits soared when Ali McCoist snatched the first goal in 21 minutes. A long ball from Bartram, McCoist with Alec McLeish, a superb spin, a deadly shot, and Rangers were ahead. And then, in the 34th minute, the high looping cross from Graham Roberts, the head of Richard Goff, and that made the half-time score Aberdeen nil, Rangers 2. A major task ahead for Aberdeen in the second half. Only one league defeat at Pretoria this season, that against Celtic way back in October. And now facing the prospect of pulling back a two-goal deficit against the Rangers side, which is in excellent form. And for the second half, Aberdeen have made a substitution. They've brought on John Hewitt to play on the left side of their attack. And he has replaced Brian Irvin. Tactical change by Aberdeen, attacking policy now in an attempt to get back into the match. Free kick taken by Betts, up goes Falk, the hand was used, yes, it's a penalty kick. The hand certainly appeared in the air and the referee has given the penalty to Aberdeen. Graham Roberts protests, so does Mark Walter, but referee Jim McCluskey is adamant. Aberdeen have a golden opportunity at the start of the second half to get right back into the match. A high ball played in, Faulkner was going for it, there was the hand that appeared to come from John Brown, it appeared to play the ball away, and the referee gives the penalty kick. So is Jim Beck, the first minute of the second half, he's got a record of eight out of eight this season, facing Chris Woods. Can Jim Beck pull Robin right back into the match? Suddenly, 
there we have a magnificent match in prospect for the rest of the second half. Jim Bett showing his value again with his 13th goal of the season. Woods making a valiant effort with the ball drilled low along the ground into the corner, giving the goalkeeper no chance at all. Spinning off the head of Roberts, here's Charlie Nicholas with John Brown. And Nicholas caught late by Brown, it'll be trouble for the Rangers defender. That cross from Hackett won't count, the play has been stopped by referee McCluskey. And the referee will take action against Brown. Charlie Nicholas has had some treatment, he's back in his feet while John Brown acknowledges the yellow card from the referee. There's Connor with a free kick. Headed away well by Brown. Clearance from McCoy, so it's returned by Connor. Wilkins appear to play that out. There's an Aberdeen throw. Here's Connor. Aberdeen keeping up the pressure. That was intended to reach Nicholas. Goff did well. It's Goff again. Now McCoyst. That's one for Durant to chase, but William Miller is there. McLeish switching it to the right to McKimmy. Sinus goes to make life difficult. Now it's with Bet. Well, Bet found out right at the start of the match that he couldn't take on Bartram for pace. John Hewitt goes down, and a tangle of legs with Wilkins. The match now simmering just below the surface. The referee will have to be at his most alert. Jim Bet challenging hard. Here's my fault now, now with a chance to go through. Bartram coming out. A foul by Goff. And Richard Goff is going to be ordered off. It's a free kick at the edge of the box, but the deliberate foul from Goff will result in a second booking, and I fear an ordering off. Goff looks distraught as he looks at the referee. Aberdeen wants a penalty kick, they won't get one. Graham Roberts has a word with the referee. The frustration in the face of Richard Goff is total, but the referee is clearly going to show the red card to Goff who is furious and very upset indeed Roberts trying to calm him down and that really is out of character for Goff he doesn't normally get so incensed but he's been ordered off it was a good move this from Aberdeen slightness in the Rangers defence allowing Faulkner to sprint like an arrow through the two defenders it was Goff who got him down just at the edge of the box now, can Aberdeen capitalise on this set piece right at the edge of the box? Every Rangers player is now back inside his own box. Chris Woods organising the wall. Waiting to sprint if there's a shot pass played. No indication it's indirect. Charlie Nicholas is there, so is Jim Betts. It's Nicholas, and the wall did well. It stood up to that shot from Nicholas. And that's gathered comfortably now by Chris Woods. Good play by McLeish. And by Brown. Here's Peter Nicholas. Almost beyond Roberts, but he reacted quickly. And the wind and the wet surface carrying the ball well away from Mark Walters. McLeish. McKimmy straight to Wilkins there's Brown, Wilkins again possession play breaks down for Rangers Hackett and Bartram together the ball was out of play though and the throw goes to Rangers Telling already though for Aberdeen, these loose balls being picked up by men in red. Willie Fourth that into the path of Bet. There goes Bet. The tackle was by Roberts, and that looked to be a clear penalty kick. The Aberdeen players are in 
since the referee is uninterested. And McCoy's now with a chance for Ranger, he's through and go all by himself. McCoy's against Leighton. And that could have settled it. Well, what a burst of action. It started with Bet racing into the Rangers box. He appeared to be pulled down by Graham Roberts. It looked to be a penalty kick. Referee McCluskey disagreed. Rangers sweeping to the other end with Ali McCoy sprinting through one and one, normally so deadly, and driving the ball wide. Faultless header is collected by Ferguson. It's a careless one. Hackett back to Connor. Connor showing a little lack of confidence there about the pass, having given it away a moment ago in a similar position. But Kimmy plays it forward. It's hanging in the wind, nodded down by Brown. Here's Charlie Nicholas making for the penalty box. Well challenged by Brown. It's Bet sending it in. Ferguson holding it up, resisting the temptation to lash the ball forward, but then finding only McKimmy. Nicholas with its own pass. Here's Stuart McKimmy. Brilliantly saved. Back with Hewitt. And through a sea of legs. Woods a hero again for Rangers. Rangers bringing the ball clear now. Walter stumping it to safety. There's Willie Miller. Faulkner now. Here's Hackett losing out to Walters. McCoy's the chance to take the ball for a run for Rangers and relieve the pressure. Durant is inside. Walters is behind. Inside it goes to Wilkins. And then Durant robbed well by McLeish. Here's Stuart McKimmy. Still coming forward for Aberdeen. Well, he was the man who could so easily have given Aberdeen the lead, but for that marvellous piece of goalkeeping by Chris Woods. Working the 1-2 with Charlie Nicholas, sprinting into the box, lashing out at goal, and Woods brought up a brilliant save. Willie Miller, now Connor. Nicholas taking a good angle inside. Clashing with Wilkins, it breaks to Hackett. Hackett playing it across, Roberts is in the way. Here's Robert Connor. Now Hackett. Stepping away from Sunnis. Oh, that's a good play by Hackett. He was fouled by Durant. Yes, he tried to keep his feet, Gary Hackett. He's a very elusive runner. But he's clearly caught by Durant as he went through the gap. So the free kick will be taken by Connor once again. Miller and McLeish joining the attack. Right to the far post. There's the header was glances wide. Chris Woods was caught in two minds, and he must be very relieved indeed to find Willie Faulkner's header off target. You can see this as a free kick comes in from Connor. Chris Woods advances two or three steps, then it checks back, and Faulkner could easily have made that two apiece. Well, that's good play from Walters again. Stamina required in abundance now on the heavy surface. A hectic jet pace match. Here's Walters. Quite content though to keep possession around the corner flag area. It's Aberdeen who have the problems, trailing by two goals to one. As McLeish turned it out for the throw, which will be taken in leisurely fashion, I'm sure, by Rangers. Yes. Sunis leaves it to Wilkins. Sunnis, back it goes to Durant. It's McCoy again! No luck that time, he really is deadly inside the box. Taking the sharp pass from Durant, thinking of one thing only, and drilling the ball wide of that far post by inches. fans now in full voice beginning to sense I think that with time rapidly running out they may well have clinched both points and vital points at that in the league race good challenge by Sunnis 
This is Robert Connor. Now, what would Aberdeen give for a flash of inspiration now around their own attacking area? The Rangers box. There's Nicholas. Now McKimmy. Tom Jones on a substitute. There's Nicholas! The kind of snap chance which Nicholas has so frequently taken for Celtic and Arsenal. But no luck that time. The cross arriving right at that lethal right boot with the shot with no real power. Stopped by Woods. Here's John Hewitt. Good play from Hewitt, but the tackle from Wilkins was decisive. Peter Nicholas, now Miller, Aberdeen throwing men forward now, here's Jones, all the way through to Hewitt, delightful chip back, Charlie Nicholas is there, and still in one goal, it was John Brown both times who kept the ball out, tremendous play, the ball played across to Hewitt, Stewart going to the byline, chipping it across. Nicholas seems certain to score. Brown blocked it with an acrobatic effort and then turned over the shot from Betts. For John Brown, the hero without question for Rangers. It appeared certain that Aberdeen would equalise. Still, the pressure's not over for Rangers. It's Aberdeen with the corner kick. John Hewitt to take it. Right to the far side, the diving hand goes wide! What a chance for Willie Faulkner! Incredible action, the corner kick driven across here by John Hewitt. Woods appeared to be at sea, Faulkner came hurtling in, and how did that stay out? Up goes Peter Nicholas, as soon as Miss Kicks, here's Hewitt. The chance is on for Aberdeen. There's Nicholas, and a great save again from Woods. What a relief there for Graham Souness, a complete miss kick. John Hewitt sprinting forward, angling the pass into the path of Charlie Nicholas, and that was magnificent goalkeeping. The header again, and it's from McLeish this time, and well off target. That may well be the last effort from Aberdeen. How have Rangers survived? Here's Walters back to take the shot goal kick. That's out of play and a throw to Aberdeen. Corner being way forward. Whistling from the Rangers end for the final whistle to be blown. There will be some time to be added on. We're into stoppage time now, and there goes the final whistle. Rangers are the winners by two goals to one after surviving the most incredible late onslaught from Aberdeen. Heroes in the end were John Brown for Rangers with some miraculous last-ditch saves and blocks. Chris Woods also performed heroically towards the end. And the beach end stands to acclaim their heroes. Aberdeen putting everything into the match. May well feel thoroughly aggrieved to take nothing from these proceedings. But in the end, the 10 men Rangers win. It's Aberdeen 1. Aberdeen Rangers suddenly came good after a few weeks of rather hesitant form. Here's how the top of the Premier League table looks now. Goes without saying, if Celtic keep winning, there's nothing anybody can do about it. But Celtic, Hearts and Aberdeen all have to come to go to Ibrox yet, and those are fixtures which could decide whether Rangers keep their crown. Whether they do or not, there's no denying the impact that the Ibrox club has made in Scottish football since Graham Souness took over at the start of last season. Let's have a look at the side which started yesterday, and particularly the defence. Now, that defence alone cost a massive £3.2 million. Remember also that Graham Souness came on, Terry Butcher is injured, and other big signings like Ian McCall and Arby Cohen simply weren't needed. Well, that's a lot of money in anyone's language. Now, studio guest today is Rangers commercial director Freddie Fletcher, the man who has to make the money which Souness can spend. 
Certainly Ibrox has its own magic. The stadium costs £10 million and if you are to attract top players, big sponsors and most of all, if you're trying to put people on seats, then there's no doubt that there isn't a more imposing place in Britain and few on the continent in which to do it. The result of some very aggressive spending in the transfer market, plus some astute marketing, has brought the results Rangers wanted. Have a look at a few of their last home gates. Well, it's no disrespect to Morton or Falkirk, but they're not the most heart-stopping fixtures of the season. I guess that the signing of Mark Walters added 10,000 to each of those gates. But it shows Rangers' ambitious plans are working. I wondered if Freddie Fletcher is happy with the results. Freddie, it's an awful lot of money that Rangers have spent. Are you getting a good return on it? Well, I think we are, Ian. Um, you saw the attendance figures in the last few games. Uh, when our company acquired controlling interest of, in Rangers just over two years ago, we said then that we thought it was a sleeping giant and that our job was to waking it up, rekindle interest and put Rangers in its rightful place as one of the top teams in Europe. Nevertheless, £5 million pounds spent on a team is still yes. an awful lot of bananas, isn't it? <laughs> well, I think it's also worth bearing in mind that Graeme Souness has also been a good seller and a fair amount of money has been collected in, in the players that he has sold. Um, our average attendances last year were something like 15,000 per game up from the previous season. If you take the average admission price of £4 and you take 25 home mm. games, then you don't need a degree in economics to know that this is something like one and a half mm. million extra of income. And when you bear in mind that we also have worked hard in commercial activities to supplement... <coughs> yeah, I was going to ask you that behind the scenes. Yes. I mean, uh, all the extra punters obviously do help, but you've got to raise an awful lot yes. of money in sponsorship and what have you. How much yes. money do you make out of that? Well, sponsorship's a very important part of our income. And obviously the success that the team has achieved in the last two years allow us to charge higher prices mm. uh, for commercial activities and sponsorship. We said uh, uh, up front that we would make a financial investment in Rangers. We asked our fans to get behind us and we promised that any additional income, either through attendances or commercial activities, would be reinvested in the clubs. The one criticism you hear on, on all the phone-ins and everywhere is, is that IROC simply isn't big enough. I mean, you wouldn't have thought that a few years ago, but um, your supporters seem to be ringing phones and saying they can't get into matches. Is that a legitimate complaint? No, I think it, it, sometimes it's exaggerated. Um, if you take a average attendances of 38 and the stadium holds 44, then in most games there is free capacity. I think it is fair to say that in the bigger games, the European game, the old firm game, for example, we could do with a stadium that's twice yeah. as big. Because, I mean, this very afternoon, I'm told there are, there are queues outside Ibrox for tickets for the Star Bucharest match, and you're having to turn people away for that. Well, I just received a phone call before we went on the air to say that um, the Bucharest tickets are all sold, so there are no tickets available for that game. One of the things you have been doing, it's been a criticism of Rangers in the past that you haven't worried about a youth policy, but one of the things that you've set aside quite a lot of cash for is to make sure, quite apart from spending five million on a team, maybe one day you'll have a team that costs you nothing. <laughs> Yes, we have a very aggressive uh, youth policy. We have got coaching schools five nights of the week throughout Scotland. There are seven coaching schools, um, so they're held more than... The one school is held more than... Uh, sorry, the schools are held more than one per evening. There right. are seven uh, run over five days throughout Scotland. Mm. And uh, a lot of time and money and energy is going into the mm. youth policy. But how much would all this depend on you winning? If you, if you went into a losing streak, would the club be in trouble? Well, what, as I said earlier, what we said that we would reinvest any additional income that, that, that comes either through the gates or commercial activities, mm -hmm. and as long as that income keeps coming, then we'll keep investing it to yeah. ensure we get the team we want. I wonder, I mean, I know it's not your money, but it's certainly the company money. I, yes. uh, do you sleep easily at night? I mean, do, bearing in mind that football, a referee's decision, a cross bark and make all the difference. Do you sleep easy at night? Well, I've got a very clear conscience and I sleep well at night. But last Sunday I had the privilege of being Doug Ellis, the chairman of Aston Villa's guests, at the Aston Villa-Liverpool game. 
and I was a bit more relaxed during that game than I was yesterday. Ray Fletcher, very many thanks for coming in this afternoon. Thank you. Right, just to prove Rangers aren't the only club alive to commerce, there's one match in Glasgow tomorrow night. It's Sissel's Cup replay at Fir Hill. And any lady or child who goes will automatically get a free 